Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to 20 Sides to Every Story. Uh, this is episode 5 of DCC Lankmar, 20 Sides Against Lankmar. We have set out to uh, do a short mini campaign using some of the materials from the box set that Goodman Games put out for um, creating a DCC Lankmar campaign. There's a lot of random tables and a lot of uh, adventure seeds and a lot of good stuff in those books and we just wanted to provide a little bit of like an actual play of what what does a campaign using those materials look like so sort of a mismatch of maybe some official modules that we're throwing in here and then things that the characters have put in here and then some of the ideas from some of those random tables are popping up as well um if you're just joining us for the first time this isn't a super long campaign so it's a little bit more maybe accessible than some of the others that we have that you know have like 30 30 plus episodes so um if you want to check this one out we do have a playlist on our youtube that you can go take a look and take a peek and see um how did we arrive where we are currently so at the end of our last session our characters had a bit of fun they had just uh successfully completed their first uh job they had uh, been contracted to. Um, they've been contracted to steal a sarcophagus from a, a group of smugglers called the Gravemen, who use a funeral house basically to smuggle things in and out of the town using either either the bodies or the caskets of the deceased. So. Uh, they had successfully and very brutally <laughs> infiltrated that smuggling ring. And um, th definitely people will know that that place has been broken into. But they recovered what they needed to, and they successfully delivered it. Um, and yes, they're, they're <laughs> 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 it's a little bit of a risque uh, image up on the screen. We're going to get to that. <laughs> There's a reason I don't just I don't put butts on the screen willy nilly around here like it's intentional. Nice. Um, so they went out and they were partying because they they made a payday. They had earned some coin for the first time since being in Lake Mar, and they hit the town. They hit the carousing district, and um, probably at some point in the evening, Mickey and Aleph. We're just kind of looking to their left and to their right and kind of wondering where did everybody go? Um, I believe the two of you did the two of you actually roll on carousing tables or did you did you not do it? We did and we got the very uh boring, oh you know, nothing yeah. awesome happens, but hey, you get one, two, three back of your luck. <laughs> yeah. So I think at some point you just did kind of like the the Irish goodbye at the tavern where you were at, and you were just kind of like shrug. Time to go home. Like th those other two guys, they're more than capable of finding their way home. And sure enough, it like probably wouldn't be a big deal. Um, unless you're telling me like your characters would have gone searching and scouring the streets for those two. But um, unless you say that, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that the two of you just went home at the end of the night and went to bed. I'm uh, not his mama. I wouldn't. Go. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really get the sense <laughs> that your characters would, your friends, kind of, but like, at, at some point, it's kind of like this is a big city. Like, who knows? Who knows where they went? Um, so we're gonna start to explain some of. We're gonna fill in the blanks a little bit, and we're gonna start here with Wes. So Wes, you are waking up this morning to probably a very palpable headache and just a general sense of disorientation. Your memories of last night are a bit foggy, though you do recall getting into a lengthy conversation with a, a very attractive woman. Um, he had short, curly black hair, um, kind of an unusual hairstyle pattern, like one half of her head, you kind of had shaved. Um, so kind of a little bit of an alternative look a bit. Um, you're you waking up, you're naked, you're in this comfortable bed, 
there's sort of like a smell of like sweet smell of perfume in the air, but you're just like being blinded. Like the, the sun is coming up. The window is like plainly open and the curtains are drawn back. And so you're just got this like annoying sensation of you'd like to probably sleep, sleep off this hangover, but um, you're probably going to have to get up and do something about that about that window if you're going to deal with anything. And so as you're kind of rousing yourself up, thinking about mustering up the effort to do that, um, the door to the room that you are in opens and slams shut. And there you see the woman that you recall sort of talking with the night before. And she's, she's just wearing a silk nightgown, She's just fervishly going around the room, kind of collecting up your clothes and your things, and she's, like, tossing them on the bed. And she's, um, as she's doing so, she, like, she starts talking to you. She says, I'm sorry. I am so sorry for the f this hurried goodbye, my love, but you need to be going. You need to be going right now. The all right, all right. Yes. Yes. Um. Preferably out the window, if you don't mind. Ah, goodness. One of, uh, all right. I suppose. Whew. Yeah, I'll, I'll get my things as quick as I can and uh, try to hurry out the window and give her a slap on the butt quick. Yeah, well, as, as soon as you do, uh, she kind of giggles a little bit and um, she says, wait, 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 don't. You could linger a little bit, you know, like, what kind of impression are you leaving me with? <laughs> I'll give her a peck on the cheek and jump out the window. And she, how, how, uh, is it like a two story or what? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and give me a, a climb sheer surfaces check? You're, so, okay. you're on like the second floor. So like, it's not like super perilous, but you could slip and take a little bit of damage possibly. The DC 12 check. Okay, I got a, I got a fourteen. Hmm. So no problem. You sh you're shimmying yourself out the window, kind of climbing down, and then she she leans out the window, looking down at you, and you see she she says catch, and she throws something down at you. It looks like a coin is like kind of falling towards okay. you. Yeah. And uh, you want to reach out and try to like catch yeah. catch, it. So try to catch it. Catch it. And uh, as you're kind of looking at it. Um, it's it's not like the, the the coinage that you have in your coin purse or whatnot. It looks like more like some kind of a token. It's got like embossed in it these three roses that kind of intertwine. Mm. And she seems like she's kind of checking over her shoulder just to make sure that she's not being visited by anybody unexpectedly. But she just says, um. You use that. I'm only pushing you out of my bedchamber because I'd like to see you again. I'd like to see you in one piece. But you can use that token. Visit any time. All right. I, I will do that. So. It was very nice. I wish, I wish we had more time, but I understand. And as uh, she's closing the window... You give me a luck check. That's a d20, right? D20, and you want to roll under your luck score. Uh, it's a 16. Okay. It's over. It's over. Uh, no re rolls or fleeting luck yet. No. So, no. um, you see, as you're, you're basically like this, this building, it's like a three story, um, <laughs> I mean, fairly nice brothel. Like, it's, it's, it's sitting on, like, kind of the corner of these two streets. Um, but there, there's a contingent of, like, armed men-at-arms, like, near the entranceway. And you recognize the person that is entering into the brothel. It is, um, it is Duth Lithquill's son. I don't think we've, like, seen him or met him yet. Um, but you had a sense yeah. that he was the one that was responsible for shipping you off. Because uh, based on the things that you have learned, it has maybe become known to him that you are one of 
to Cliff Quill's, you know, illegitimate children. And so he is the one, you get, you're starting to put together the pieces of, okay, he's maybe the client that she's worried about, like his caught wind that he was coming to visit. And mm. so you see at the doorway, this man, he's got um, thick black hair, heavy eyebrows, just unruly, sort of like his father. Um, and he has just kind of this lordly, nose in the air way of kind of carrying himself. And as you're coming out the window, like he turns his head, he's like entering the brothel, he turns his head and he does like a double take and he sees you. How's it going? It's you. And he's like looking up. Come here. Don't I'm going to take him. off running as fast as possible. Oh, come. <laughs> and uh, so you're going to start running. Uh, so you start booking it down um, the street there. You pretty quickly, I think, identify kind of where you are. Um, okay. That's what I was wondering. I was going to wonder where I was, if I knew kind of where I was. Yeah, so I don't know if if any of you are in uh, oh, yeah. Foundry, but I'll put, pop up the uh, Lankmar map. So I put I have labeled a few things here on this map for you guys, just so we can start to maybe put together kind of a consistency of like, this is where Beggar's Lodge is, and this is where the embalming house was. And so you're, um, I'll move the little party token here. You're here up by Lady Minx's House of Forbidden Lust, which is um, just off of Four Street and Barter Street. And so uh, you start taking off. Um, why don't you... How do I want to resolve that? Why don't you give me another luck check? Let's just do a luck check. A 12, so I'm under. Under, okay. So uh, you start to take off, and... Is there a particular direction you'd be interested in going? Um, Just getting the map up right now. Um, I would probably be going away from, like, beggars. Um, I would be going back towards the Silver Eel Tavern, because that's where he had caught me. Okay. The people, the people that he had coming after me. So um, you managed to um, maybe get to Barter Street. Barter Street is a, one of the wider, you know, main yep. main routes. Um, I well, not exactly remembering. Is the Silver Eel is maybe in the carousing district? I believe. Um, I think so. Yes, they'd probably be heading like straight east. Um, through this very, very busy um, thoroughway. And there's just like a knot of people up ahead, um, some of them carrying like pots, some of them carrying like sacks of grain and such, maybe heading to like kind of a market somewhere in this, this area. Um, like pretty busy street or not? Yeah. Like, like it looks like you're like, basically you're about to hit traffic. Um, yeah. I, I would try to blend right into that. I would, I would shoot right to the middle of that and try to blend right into it. Okay. Why don't you give um, me a flip, you... flip my cloak inside out my robe. One of your thieves skills, um, um, let's maybe see. hide in shadows. That's, yep, that's what I was thinking too. Ooh, this is, uh, that's a natural 20, so that would be a 25. Okay, no problem. So as you flip up your cloak and you move into that group of people, like basically at this point, you can see there's only like maybe two of Duke Lithquill's like personal guard that managed to like keep pace with you. And as soon as you hit that throng of people, you blend right in. And you look back maybe for just a second, and you can kind of see the confused looks on their faces. They split up and kind of go off on some side streets, thinking maybe you had 
tried to duck them that way. So you're feeling pretty good that you're maybe in the clear, at least for now, but worried maybe that he's here and like you really don't know the context of why he's here and was he is he really here looking for you he's just you just don't know those questions yeah i think at, yeah, at this point in time he's victor's got a lot of questions in his head and he's starting to probably believe that he is the mad duke's son so uh and he would he would just he would head right back to the uh the beggars beggars lodge then as long as he's not getting followed Sounds good. Um, so it probably takes you maybe like an hour or so to make your way in that that direction. Okay. And so this is where we will cut to. Um, and so as you are making your way to Beggar's Lodge, out on the streets, maybe like three blocks away from Beggar's Lodge, there's like this crowd that seems to have been is is gathered around like kind of in like a circle like they're gathered around some kind of spectacle or something and um you just hear you can't see like at the center of that crowd but you hear a kind of booming voice or, or a caller um addressing this crowd just saying attention to ye destitute and downtrodden I come to you from across the inner sea, from the land of the eight cities, to offer unto you opportunity, a chance to rise from this squalor, and, and enter your name into the annals of history. The great Duke Lithquill offers this invitation to earn fame, fortune, and glory in the gladiatorial arenas that he presides over. Those interested... Step forward, speak with me, and we will hold here a contest to show your battle prowess. Only the worthy may enter. And you can see, like, just, like, like the lowest of the low people, like these desperate people. This guy's, like, throwing out coin. Like, he's, he's attracting a crowd, and you know that he's luring, he's luring some of these, these really poor people into this idea that they're going to make a bunch of money if they maybe, you know, brandish a sword and try to cry out for this uh, quote-unquote opportunity that you have been trying to run away from. Does he have any guards with him? Um, so you can't really... See, there's there's so many people that it's, like, a little bit hard to see. Um, okay. If you got a little bit closer, you know, there might be a chance that you could kind of peek in past a few of the heads yeah i would try to yeah. okay so you kind of you crowd in a little bit just to get get sight and you can see the man who is 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 calling out to the crowd kind of a hooked nose um fairly unattractive looking man with a little bit of a hunchback a little bit of a he doesn't himself look like much of a fighter or anything like that um but he <laughs> does have six men at arms like with him that are all wearing kind of the sash of the um uh Ul Hrusp, the the city um that Duke Lithquill presides over. And you can see, you know, there, there's a number of like young men, old men mix are stepping up and signing some kind of a document, putting their name down in a ledger. Yeah, we just kind of, if if I could get within ears, uh, within range of any of those participants, I would just uh, kind of loudly and mockingly just, uh, you're signing a death warrant. Do not fall for this silver tongue's deception of riches and glory. You'll be face down in the dirt dead. Uh, make a personality check over it this time or is it or yeah, just oh it's it, just a modifier it'll be a yeah add your modifier to it uh i want to burn you can wait till after you roll to burn uh, that's right okay. oh that's a 20 again okay oh so a number of the people it seems like are like turning their attention to you um and <clears throat> the 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 caller is just like 
Bah. Spoken like one who is talentless in the field of combat. If you brandish your sword, you'll become a hero. You can become a champion, and you'll become very wealthy. And so, like, you could you could see some of the people are kind of, like, like, waving their hand and, like, moseying on. Um, and so it looks like you've dissuaded, you know, a large chunk of the people from talking with them. But there's always going to be a couple. <laughs> there's always going to yeah. be a couple that are just really that that poor and down and out so um yeah and i would just want to make sure i like embedded his his face in my memory yeah this guy he's got kind of like a bird almost like a bird like crow like face okay um, so he's very very distinctive would forget him and oh uh galaxian just redeemed by a player a reroll um shoot I don't have my so we're gonna we're gonna convert that I think into a couple points of fleeting luck for you guys just because okay that's kind of how we've been doing this so um my bad for not flipping the exp store over so we'll just uh, we'll convert that to four points of fleeting luck I think that's probably more than the exp for that thing so um let me just handle that real quick I'm gonna turn those things off thank you Galaxian yeah thank you indeed thank you. The so fleeting luck is uh, good till someone rolls a natural one. one. <laughs> so you want to use this. Yeah, and then I would just start heading back to back to Beggar, Beggar's Lodge again, but trying to I want to take some zigzagging past to make sure if he recognizes me or anything like that. Because we don't want to go. I don't want to go back to the gladiator arenas. Um, this individual in particular probably doesn't notice you, although you probably recognize him. He's like a regular recruiter for Duke Lithquill, and so okay. you probably had seen him in the jail, maybe making a drop off or something. But you don't get. You had like a direct, pretty direct interaction with him and you're not getting the sense that like he's not sicking those guards on you okay um what did galaxian say your brother's alive a prisoner of the withered crone who dwells in immemorial city that lies beyond the shattered sea i don't know if i know that quote do you guys i i do not is it is it Willow the new Willow TV show? Because it reminds me of that. Could be. You let us know, Galaxian. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, no problem. You're like three blocks away from uh, Beggar's Lodge, so you make your way there, where we're going to. And you're going to see as you're getting closer to Beggar's Lodge. It's weird. There's a lot of, like, broken windows. There's a couple of flipped over, like, fruit carts that look like they've been kind of battered in the wheels, like, kind of on off kilter. There's a lot of, like, pissed off looking, like, like people, like, surveying some damage. And so you're like, Ugh. not, but at this point, not the most unusual thing you've seen yet today, but, you know, you're starting to be like, what now? as you make your way to Beggar's Lodge and you, you, as you walk in, this is more hostile than it really is tavern and such. So you, you know, you walk in, there's kind of like a little bit of a hallway, a little antechamber there with a desk. And, um, you do notice that, um, the proprietor, uh, I think her name was Rahina or Rahana. Mm -hmm. She is not sitting She's not sitting at her desk where she normally checks people in and such. Um, and you look into the little kind of common area where there's a couple of long tables set up. There's a... What kind of weapon does Ruklef use? Uh, Warhammer. Okay. So there's a Warhammer that's like stuck in the wall. And like the shaft of it is like, like, like he just went and like started bashing the wall in. And so there's just plaster everywhere. Um, you know, there's like maybe like a little tiny bar there. And like there's like alcohol bottles are all smashed. 
And then you see Ruklef in the corner, just like snoozing, like he's snoring loudly, naked, just like in the corner, kind of huddled in the fetal position. And Rahina is right there, like arms crossed, just like staring him down. And this is like pretty much the exact moment that uh, uh, Mickey and Aleph are coming downstairs from their room. And Rahina just looks at you all and she says, I am speechless. Uh, yeah, me too. Uh, Rukhlev, and Alex goes there and says, Rukhlev, are you okay? I come too. Yeah, you so you, you, this is the worst headache, splitting headache. No memories <laughs> after a certain point from the previous evening. I look up at Aleph and uh, kind of with one eye closed, pressing on my head, I say, where, where am I? Um, safe. Uh, he looks around to Rahina, uh, but it, it seems that uh, you've misplaced some of your belongings. Uh, well, except except the warhammer, but uh, yeah, the rest seems not to be there. Any points at your naked body? Rahina is just like the better question is where weren't you last night? Like go. If you have a chance, you should take a look outside. What happened? Well, um, I could... And I'll, I'll get up and look for, I don't know, a bar cloth or something at the moment to kind of... Sure. <laughs> she, she's just, like, watching you, like, go behind the bar, like, grab some bar towels. She's like, you might as well. You might as well. Like, <laughs> it's on the house. Thanks. You guys have a plan to pay for any of this? Yes, yes, Rahina, we'll take care of it. Just we, me and you, or we can talk. We'll take care of it. All right. Okay, you're gonna take care of it, and and your rent just doubled. Yes, ma'am. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. Uh, it wasn't. I need a big plate of eggs. Can I get a big plate of eggs, please? And she's just like. <gasps> And she like goes to the kitchen, and she's just swearing, and you can hear her like like cracking some eggs, and she's like oh, cracking the egg. God, I'll go. I'll go put a pouch where the, in the kitchen with like twenty gold riffs on it. Okay, right away. And uh, I just go sit down at the table and put my head in my hands. I, I grab my warhammer out of the wall, and I mean I'll just laugh. <laughs> Set the warhammer down. Sit down at the table and. Put my head in my hands and go. What? What did I do? Mickey's, Mickey talks with Rukeleff, and he he purposely starts talking louder. You know, <laughs> just what have you been doing last night? <laughs> I don't know. I remember leaving you guys at the table at the bar. I went out back. I decided I'd try whatever it was that uh, I took from. Uh, I took a bit of the score or some of that stuff from yesterday, and uh, that's it. I'd, I'd, and my head hurts this bad. I got a war hammer in the wall. It had to have been a good time, but uh, I mean, at least for me, I can't guarantee for anybody else. But um, did you guys hear anything? Did you, you guys didn't see me again? Hey, if 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 you don't remember it, then it wasn't a good time. But I <laughs> maybe you I, can maybe you can uh, uh, get some somebody to tell you what you were doing last night, if there's any way around. And yes, I met that lady. <laughs> she me. could help you predict your future. Yeah. <clears throat> You all hear the door uh, to Beggar's Lodge open and close. And a figure approaches the common area. You're probably your heart maybe skips a beat because you just like there's so many terrible people this could be. But it turns out to be Jairus. And <sighs> Jairus has a bottle 
of wine in his hand, or he's got two two bottles of wine, and he just like is looking around, and he's just like, I thought perhaps we could uh, celebrate. I heard you did a good job. You did a number on the Gravemen, but uh, I think you, I think I think you guys started the party without me. He yeah. just he's like room clef. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I just take the washcloth and throw it over my shoulder. The city guard is looking for you, my friend. The city guard is looking for me? Yes. Apparently you were at a tavern last night. I remember that. A number of people said that a man wielding a war hammer started very loudly, very proudly proclaiming that he could single-handedly defeat a leviathan in combat. And then he charged out of the bar and attacked an apple cart. And just started going berserk uh, down in the market. City guard sure. came. They tried to calm you down. And you urinated all over their toes. And you said, ah, drown, you beast. Sounds like me. They tried right. to appreh apprehend you, but you apparently you smacked both of them in the face with your weapon, knocked them clean out. And I'm shocked that they haven't found you. I mean, the trail of destruction pretty much leads to right here. They're scouring the streets as we speak, picking up your... I saw a man... He had your pack and your clothes. I uh, take a couple of washcloths and cover my war hammer with it, just in case anybody comes in. Oh, you're dripping everywhere, Ruklef. As soon as they come is in, there... they're going to look for the naked man. Is there... I mean, at this point, is there a bounty? Oh. No. I don't know. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked into it. Uh, this is just, just things that I... Picked up on my way here. Um, I went down to buy the wine, you know, down apparently where you had been partying last night. And he's just like looking at these two bottles. Like he's like kind of dejected a little bit. Like he was hoping to like pop these open. And he's just like, he hands them to you. He's like, I don't know where you're going to keep them, but <laughs> these are yours. Job well done. Um, I we'll probably one. put a bounty on you if, if they can't find you right away, the city guard. <laughs> I'll open one of these and say, get some glasses. You might as well uh, continue. A little hair of the dog. And uh, he's like looking around. He's like, um, are there any glasses left? I, I drink out of the bottle and hand it to him. Yeah. And then he's just like, he's drinking and he's like, now, Rucliffe, I guess we haven't talked economics for some time, but... Um, you do realize after you make the money, it is good to keep some of it. Rainy day fund and such. Did, did the city guard, did they take my money? Is that what happened? I believe so. I suppose well, I got my armor, my axes. Everything. They took everything? I believe so. Um, Do you know anybody on the inside that might be able to get my goods back for a fee? Well, um... Or where do they hold it? Maybe we can. I mean, there, there is a guardhouse a few blocks away. It would be probably where the beat you know, on this neighborhood, uh, holes up. Likely they're keeping it there. Um, God knows how long it'll be there. I mean, you've got 
paid or you had a fair amount of coin on you, right? It's only a matter of time before those, I mean, they're going to split that up as soon as they get the chance. Yeah, it was quite a bit of coin. It was all my coin. I mean, I, this is it. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, I can, I could probably pull a few strings and confirm whether it's there, uh, so you know it's worth taking the risk or not, but. I don't know, what, it wouldn't hurt to get information, I guess. If you well, on the other hand, if there is an intention to pursue you legally, it could help if you came up clean and uh, use your money to uh, pay an administrative fee, you know, deal with the damage delivered in exchange for leniency. Up to you. I just a possibility. I, I know in all the many books that I read, only the first half, uh, Basic Law was one of them. Of course, I didn't read the final part because it's incredibly boring. But I do remember this principle. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It, it didn't sit well on my ear. Let's just pay pay a few people off, if anything. I was gonna. I was gonna ask Wes and Mickey here if they know anybody that's uh, part of the guard. Uh, know any of them that are? I mean, probably all of them. What? All of them are on the take. Somewhat. They just don't like getting a warhammer upside the head, right? I mean, there might be a little bad blood towards me, but. I I I usually don't deal with them. Um, there are some people in the. Thieves Guild that do have some connections, but I don't. Uh, are the guards still uh, outside searching? Uh, I'm going to go take a look. Okay, uh, so you head out onto the street, and, um, you know, you're just kind of like going to walk the blocks a little bit in the general vicinity of Beggar's Lodge. Um You'll see maybe two blocks away, you'll see like a, a lone um, guard is talking with some of like the the residents of that street. Like, like the, is, he's taking like accounts of what was broken, what, what happened. Is he carrying any of uh, Rugoff's gear? Uh, this particular guard, no. Okay. So I'm, that's what I'm searching for. Who's... Who's, uh, you know, um, been assigned to carry the the uh, leftovers of, of okay. Blue Crofts? Uh, you're probably getting the party. sense that you're probably, like, that part of it has already happened. Like, they've already done the obvious thing, which is pick up all the stuff that has been, that was laying around. And now they're, oh. now they're at the point, they're just, like, they're taking a taking stock, taking inventory of damaged goods, and just getting... Collecting like basic information from the people that were wronged or whatever. Okay. Try, trying to put so, together, you know. You, I mean, you all live in Lankmar long enough. Like these guys aren't probably going to put out like a lot of effort into finding Ruklef, but they're doing like the bare minimum that they need to just to, like make people feel like they were hurt or whatever. You know, if you ever had a bike stolen yeah. or something, like you know what I'm talking about. The police right, are gonna I'm go find the person. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, I'm gonna go back in. Uh, sorry, Rukov. Uh, it looks like they made off with your stuff already. Otherwise, I was gonna try and at least get your coin back, but um, I was gonna try and pick their pocket or something. But they're they're not around. Yet. And, and Jaris is gonna start getting like a little antagonistic with you a little bit. Like, oh, you just give up that easily? Like, you just ripped off these 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 grave men like the city guard come on how hard could it be well are you talking to me i'm talking to you yeah well they're not there anymore well <laughs> not the one that has the stuff the goods well, well they probably took the goods to to the guard the guard yeah 
Well, it so, shouldn't be too hard for you to break in there and slip yeah, in, but, slip out. Well, we'll have to check it out and I'll, find out, you know? I'll get you some information. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll get you some basic info so that you got something to go on before you make a plan, but... In the meantime, Rukov, you know, maybe Rukov lay off the sauce. has to go on a plan to, to stay away from the, the booze, though. You know? <laughs> yes. No, agreed, agreed, yes. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's any around here anymore, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, so with regards to... As, as I think you drank maybe... You drank, like, maybe one of the bottles together um, a little bit. A little hair of the dog. Um He'll he'll leave the other bottle with you, and he'll explain um, that it is a bottle of uh, Cormel uh, Amber. It is a very produced from the underground city of Cormel. It's a pretty it's a pretty fancy bottle. Like these probably run a few gold rilks a bottle, um, mm. but you know he'll leave you with the other one. He'll say you know once. Maybe, yeah. You know, this one, you, you drink this when when you get your stuff back as to celebrate a second time. Um, but essentially, what it does is it's going to have four doses in it, like four beverages that you can consume. And if you take a, you, you know, your your kind of rest that you're allotted in the adventuring day, um, it'll give you a bonus to your hit die, a plus oh. two for when you do your healing. So very nice. Cool. So Jairus will uh, take his leave of you, and with kind of the intention that he's gonna he's gonna go out and find out what he can learn about the guardhouse that presumably has Rukleff's stuff. Um, your eggs are brought out and some bread, and wow. Rahina doesn't say say too too much further to the group, but she uh, you can see she's got her bag of coin that um, Wes had left for her and. It seems that she's, uh, you don't get the sense that she's going to run off and like squeal on you or anything like that, uh, that she's been placated for now. So I pull the towel off my shoulder, hand it to her. Takes that. <laughs> sorry. And, sorry. Well, I don't know if it bears mentioning, but. Laundry's at three, so if you do happen to find some clothes, you go back. All right. I'm sure I can find something. So what are the, what is the plan for the day, or are there individual things that some of you want to take care of before Jairus gets back? I think Aleph will uh, uh, share with the party that he intends, before he loses them, he intends to bring uh, some of the stashes put together to the man he owes money to, to see if he can, well, basically say, oh, look, I owe some money to the, the Vermilion uh, Viper, and I want to, you know, be whole with him. So, um if you guys have nothing cool to do, if you could discord me just in case the situation gets sour, which I don't anticipate it will be, but just in case, it's always a good thing to have a plan B. Um, but that's what I have to do today. Well, don't we go with you? Hello, why don't, why don't we go with you? You want to go do this alone? No, no, I don't want to do this alone. I, I'm saying, please come. <laughs> oh, all right. I thought you were telling us you were going to do this alone. I was like, what no, are no, you no. thinking? Look at what I, happened to Rootcliffe. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm easily, easily scared. So no, please, God, do come with me. What, the, what do we plan to do, Rootcliffe? Oh man, close. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk to. Rahina and see if she has any huge man clothes around. I'll go talk to her. I don't think she likes you right now. I don't think she likes any of us. I'm I'm sorry, guys. It's all right. I uh, I may have messed up as well. I was going and 
doing theater last night and uh, I ran into the Mad Duke's son again. So he might know we're here. Which one? The guy who was cleaving heads like crazy? No, the Mad Duke's son. I, I don't think you've seen him, but I. Uh, he's the one that had me captured at the silver. At the silver ear. Hmm. What's uh, his he's name? In town. Um, I don't know if I gave you his name, but his name is uh, Geronimus. Let's quote. Yes. Yes, what's his name? Geronimus. And he turned you in? No, he, he sent people for me. He sent his people out for me. And they took me to the arenas. So I... It's possible that maybe I am the Mad Duke's son and he's trying to get rid of, rid of me for some reason. Well, he'll have to get through me if he comes back, just so you know. I well, thank you. I, I appreciate that, Rucliffe. But we need to get you some armor and your stuff back. Yeah. So, um, if you go to talk to Rahina, like she'd be like, I don't have any clothes that could fit him. I mean, well, do you know where I could get some, Rahina? What? The, and then I'll take care of the damages. All right. And she'll say, you know, you know, if it's just clothes, you could. There's going to be like a tailor or something in the neighborhood that you'd be able to go and get something. Um, I don't know what's reasonable. We'll say, we'll say a, a new set of clothes maybe runs like five silver. Okay, I'll I'll run. I'll ask her if she'll run, and I'll I'll give her a gold Reich she, for her troubles. Yeah, she'll she'll agree to that um more or less you're the only people that are staying here and it's kind of like and especially now with the condition that the tavern is or the the hostel is in like she can she's got some time to go and do that um so she'll go do that um as far as like other things like if you want to buy armor or additional equipment and things like that like no problem like you could go up the street and uh um yeah, I wanted to buy a short shot. bow if I could with arrows. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You can go and... Okay, I'll subtract it off there. Other uh, shopping needs? Otherwise, you can return back with those things. Um, Rahina will come back, you know, Ruklef, and, and deliver some clothes for you. Um And uh, so you don't have armor right now. Do you have an agility modifier? Nah, that's all right, though. And do you have a... Let me look this up. There's, like, special unarmored rules for Lankmar. We're, like, a little bit... Yeah, I would had leather and a shield, but my agility modifier is zero. Just a bit. I'm just a big lummox. Okay. It's a, it's double your agility you would get. Um. Okay. Um. You so you you're clothed at least. You've got your war hammer. Um. That's what you're you're armed with at least for the moment. Um, other things that y'all want to do, or do you want to head out and escort Aleph to the Vermilion Viper? Yeah, the only thing I would do is let uh, Rahina know that if she gets, you know, some wood and stuff like that, I will, I'll fix her wall, you know, and her bar. I mean, I'll do the labor of cleaning up, you know, fixing as much as I can. That gesture seems to kind of further 
calm her her incensed rage uh over what has happened and so um you know she kind of she doesn't exactly say thank you but she she says well I, maybe that that'll that'll be a start to setting things right um so you you all head out then with uh with Aleph and um Aleph this was I think we had said like maybe this guy might be even in like the slums like a different neighborhood and whatnot but um this guy isn't like he's no al capone like he's he's a gang leader basically himself and so um you make your way um I don't know. Let's say that he's like somewhere up near in between Beggars Boulevard and uh Festival Street and Wall Street, this little little quadrant here. Um and so you're you're taking familiar avenues to kind of get to the secluded area in the slums, uh, down alleys that you have probably dealt some of the drugs in. Um, you know, this was kind of your beat. This is where you um, did some of that. Um, you know, on occasion, you'd probably go to the Plaza of Dark Delights and deal there too, um, especially if you had like a customer kind of lined up. But as far as just like general selling on the street, a lot of that probably happened here. So you travel down like a narrow alley that is pretty scant with people um and you travel down narrow alley that ends in a dead end and there's a decrepit wooden door that leads into this like five-story tenement building uh, like this door is just like rotten wood there's trash and filth in the alleyway you can see there's like there's like a a man that's just like laid out passed out just wet soiled himself just laying in the in the alleyway but it's not very glorious but you know that this is that door leads to where the vermilion viper's den is okay guys gotta go through this and as you're making your way like into the alley you kind of look up there's like clotheslines that are like draped across from the the opposite building to the building the tenement where the vermilion viper is and there's like it's weird. It's like creepy ornamentation. It's just like rusty blades and butcher knives and like daggers and cleavers. They're just gore splattered or at least maybe, you know, whether it's actual blood or whatnot, maybe it's just a bit of food or whatever, but they look filthy and like they're there as sort of a intimidating kind of thing. Looks like my kind of place. Elf, you used to deal with these people? What was wrong with you? I thought you were smart. Uh, I'm very smart. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, you gotta get the juice where, where the juice is. Uh, so, um, got some money from this dude. I thought I could multiply it lost it all in a game of chance and that's uh, how it all started what what can you've been here before right what what what's the inside look like what what can we expect uh, i don't really remember I, I tend not to register stuff that are important to me uh, sorry all right when you lost this money in a game of chance who are you playing it uh, I've found oftentimes that when you're playing with certain people in games of chance, the you just you don't have one. Are you certain that it wasn't uh, you weren't taken advantage of uh, on a on a big bet? I have no idea. I, I, I like to think that uh, I'm in control of the game, but truth is, uh, once you the cards are dealt, 
kind of rely on luck. Uh, so I used to run a game on the street, and it wasn't luck either. I think Wes well, knows what I'm talking about too, eh? Yep. This was Link that has made all this the shithole. Well, I'm telling you, I'm not going to invest uh, in a game of chance anymore. I'm going to rely on an old for a quid that I know how to raise, and I actually make a pretty decent one. So that's that can give me a steady source of income. Yes, well, honest. Uh, it's good, honest. Very work. honest. Good, honest work. Well, let's not try to get into a fight here, Rucliff. I don't know how he's feeling, and he's got nothing. You're kind of our ace, all right? Yeah. My my head hurts, but uh, a lot of times that just makes me angry. So, you got some cards up your sleeve, Elf, in case. Uh, no. Should I? No. Don't you? What do you do? you do? Things to you do the magic stuff, eh? Oh, you that's the magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that stuff. All right. On a good day, uh, yep. but yeah. If the shit hits the fan, right? I don't plan for the shit hitting the fan, honestly. I'm just going to hand him over the money I owe him and, and tell him that, you know, we're, we're, we can be peaceful ever after. Hopefully he buys it. All right. So you came to this guy for money. He pretty much double-crossed you, made you lose, and you're going to go and give him more money, and you don't think he's going to want more? Well, uh, I know how much I owe him. him. Is he charging I much, interest? I know how much I owe him. I'm going to give it back to him. Even though the, the unpleasantry of him having me taken to the gladiatorial pit, I'm going to, you know, discount him that part and, and, and hope for the worst square so I can go about my business and, and become a successful weed entrepreneur like I was always meant to be. So what's what's not stopping this guy from telling those of the gladiator pets who run it, like my dear brother, that, that we're back here. And then... Well, why would you do that? For money. Yeah, he, might be get, he might get paid for it. He might have got paid for it last time. Well, the way I see it, he has already made a bunch of money off of me. He should be content and go uh, and find someone else to squeeze like an orange. It's only fair. It's fair. But yeah. All right. Let's see what happens. So you want to approach the door? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Um, like I said, it's a pretty, pretty shoddy looking door. Um, you get the sense that there's likely at least one bouncer or something like behind that door. Um, so what would you like to do as you approach? Aleph will go, will, will look behind to the party, say thumbs up. And then we'll knock on the door three times. Tok, 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 tok. Mm. You just hear like some kind of large form behind the door. Okay, who goes there? Uh, I'm here to uh, repay the Vermilion Viper what he is owed. Oh. Oh, who, who are we speaking with? I am Aleph. The door, like, clink. Like you hear the bolt, like like immediately unlocks, and you see this big kind of oafish looking guy, bald, big belly. He's wearing, he's just he's he's wearing like kind of like a like a tank top kind of just like sleeveless kind of you know, piece of cloth that's just barely covering his top half of his torso, and there's like. There's like a couple of piss buckets nearby. They're just like flies kind of hovering. It's just like there's a terrible smell in this hallway. And he's just like kind of scratching his belly. And he's like, Come on in. <laughs> he has like two teeth. Uh, these are my friends. 
They're they're very nice, he says as he passes by. Okay. Well, go on then. We've been expecting you. What? You've been expecting me? That if you if Aleph comes, to let him in immediately. Uh, okay. Well, that that's good news. These the guy just shrugs and oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotta keep this door closed. Okay, okay. Moves in. And so, um, there's very dark, dingy halls, and um, it's almost a little bit labyrinthian in here. Um, you see halls that you're walking past, like open doors. Like many of the rooms don't even have doors; like they've been taken off the hinges and whatnot. And so you're going past like gambling table rooms, you know, where there's, you know, a smattering of maybe smurducks and copper. Like, none of these tables have, like, a large amount of coin. Um, but there are games of cards, dice being rolled, and those kinds of things. There's also, you're just, like, moving past rooms where there's just people totally strung out on drugs, like, just sitting around. Um, lots of, like, weird odors coming from vapors and smoke. Uh, but eventually, like you kind of know the way, so you're 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 leading the group, and you walk through to um, this like larger room that just has like moldering walls, like holes in the walls. It looks like maybe there was some nice like wallpaper at one point that was plastered on the walls, but it's all peeling down and yellowed. There's been some effort to like put up these like weird tapestries and rugs to sort of add some kind of ambiance to the environment, but they're all, like, pretty nasty looking, like, just, like, filth has, has been thrown at them. Um, some of them are even ripped and tattered. And all about in this, like, kind of open, like, 15 foot by maybe 25 foot room. It looks like, like, walls had been knocked down to, like, make this space larger. Like, it was, it's not naturally the, a big open room. But you're just looking around, and there's just a motley crew of prostitutes and beggars that are lounging about, smoking from filthy pipes and hookahs. Um, you you do observe there's at least four armed men that are not glossy-eyed at all, that are standing about the hall just intently and very professionally like surveying and making sure that this debauchery doesn't get out of hand. Um, and at the back end of the room, you can see seated atop an oversized chair is this very anorexic looking man whose stare narrows upon you. Very gaunt, angular features. And he stands and he's a little glossy eyed himself. And he's wearing like this long trench coat. That's just a patchwork of different colored red like fabrics and none of them match like it, it's not you know it's 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 not a regal looking man that is before you like this is a guy that's straight up like probably high himself and he just says an old friend is here Aleph it has been so long since I've seen you come come approach let's yes. take a look at you it's been indeed a long time, but uh, I'm very happy to be alive, and I want to celebrate life in the best way I know. Give me you back the money I owe you. Oh, that is just too kind of you, Ella. Please come, come, approach. He approaches. And, uh... Do you have like something in your hands that you're like bringing? Yeah, I, I guess I, I'll show him like the big, you know, purse of coin, like ding, 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 ding. No, but and he like he like takes it. He's like that is just too kind. First one of these, and he like opens up his arms and he wants to give you a hug, and then like he passes the coin off to like the guard behind him, and then he makes like a gesture like you do do count it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's like giving you this embrace. He smells like heavily of bo, um, and he just says. Where where have you been, Aleph? Oh, that's uh, right. Hmm, that's right. You've come a long way. 
You've had a long journey to get here. Indeed. And he like he looks at like Mickey and Wes and Ruclef and he says, This one, he is one of my best dealers, but a little bit of a gambling problem. We have missed you. We have missed you terribly, Alf. Your 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 talents are needed here. So oh, it is good to see that you are back. And how much was it? How much how much did you bring me, Alef? A hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty that is what you did owe me at the time that you left the city. But I do think interest is likely oh there's opportunity costs alif after all um so but, but uh you sold me into slavery i imagine and what a mistake that, that... was alif it i no, 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 I, I, I fully I'm... acknowledge how no no I, I i you you did the right thing it was totally in your prerogative i'm just saying probably that brought you some additional money that ought to be mm -hmm. accounted here that you make a good point that that partially covers it but you're a smart man maybe there's something you can think of to make this right make us whole hmm i believe there was my stash of weed in my place i imagine you have uh, repossessed it. Hmm. Yes. That was... Well, we don't really use that building anymore. Been, been a bit. Likely still there. I suppose oh. I could allow you to go back there and say for the price of maybe half of what you sell it for? I only really need a small part to seed a new plant. Uh, the rest you can take to satisfy whatever interest you think has been accrued. I think that is a fantastic idea, Aleph. Yes, I think you should probably depart and go there immediately, wherever you hid this stash. Pray it's still there. I do. I mean, I pray it's still there because I haven't been there since. I was too scared. And if not, Aleph, you're going to have to think of something because I hear the Duke is running low on participants in his arena. And it sounds like his recruiters are here just now. I, I don't know. I know hate to dealing work. with them, Aleph. I hate it. They're, they're, oh, they, they look down upon us, Aleph. I hate making my money that way. Well, if you send me again to the fighting pit, I'm a dead man. I'm not a fighter. I but... don't, I don't think it's going to come to that. I know that you will find a way to make. Well. Uh, as you know, I've been studying magic. Yes, I have. Well, uh, some folk would uh, think me as a valuable investment for the future. If I learn magic of, of uh, much more power of the one that I currently know, then, you know, counting me as, as an ally would be a valuable asset, I believe. And I, that is, I am factoring that in to my response to you right now. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let me go back to my old place yes. with your blessing. And uh, yes. if my stash is still there, I think we can find a way to square this unpleasant situation. Bravo. Bravo to Aleph. And he's just like clapping. He's the only one clapping. No no one else is paying attention to this show. But, that he's but I at. do have a question, though. Oh, yes. How did you expect that I would be coming back? Uh, I did 
not expect that, Aleph. That is, you're just proving how remarkable you are by standing here in front of me. Um, I heard, heard a bit of news about some business that happened over there. Something on a ship. Something went down on a boat. I knew it had to be you. Back this way. And I was right. Here you are. Uh, you must study magic too, then, because you have an uncanny ability to foresee the future. Foresee the future? Yeah. Why, why do you say that, Aleph? Well, you heard something. You connected the dots, and you imagine it was me when the last thing you know about me it was that I was destined to a gruesome death in the fighting pit. That takes quite a lot of uh, foretelling and analytical skill, I would say. Well, it's all in the past now. You are here. You are making things right because you are an honorable man. I am. And you have, it would seem, very powerful friends with you. They'll be able to see this through. I'm sure they also don't want to go back fighting pits. So I would, I would implore you, please assist young Aleph in recovering these goods of his and making sure that they are thusly sold and half of those profits come back to me and... Perhaps we can do more business together, Ellen. You never have too much gold here in Lincoln. Mr. Vermillion, I'd like to ask you a question, if I may. Of course, of course. Step forward, I didn't catch your name. Well, my name Skip. Welcome, but Skip. Maybe I'm not looking at this predicament correctly, but you're blackmailing... Poor Aleph, which is okay, it's Lankmar's way. Would you say those that have fought in the gladiator pits, made their way through here, destroyed everything that got in their way, made their way to your lobby, would it be correct to threaten them with going back to the pits? Oh, I am, I think we are misunderstanding each other. I am not threatening, I am merely providing. Facts, and the fact is that the Duke has sent recruiters here to Lankmar, and he has, and I'll be taking care of them. Well, good because we have a mutual interest in that. I, as I said, I do not like these. They're bad people. Hmm. So you'd like us to run around on this errand for gold, or would you rather settle up Mr. Aleph's debt now? We have important business to do. We don't need to be wasting our time with this bullshit. What's the damn dollar value? Let's get this done and over with. And he, he, like, sits back down in his chair, and he kind of leans back, and he says, Aleph, I don't want a one-time payment. I want, as Aleph said, an investment. But for the month, I think 75 sounds good. So you expecting us to pay you 75 gold riffs per month, to, so you keep your mouth shut? Yes. Interesting. Well, I always like it. Go usually, ahead, it, usually, if there's an investment, money comes this way, right? Yes, Rukluk, this is what our good friend is. This is what our good residents of Lankamar do, is they blackmail each other. 
What I am offering you is, Aleph, you access to the streets. You will be, you know, you won't be, be harassed. My people will look out for you. Maybe we can keep some of those nasty slavers away from where you are staying. This could be beneficial. This is a two-way street. Actually, I was thinking of moving uh, to the north east end here and, and uh, sell my products to the bourgeoisie and whatnot. Don't want That's... to do that, Aleph. They are not Why? like us. They pay good money. Be good money, but do they have your back? We have history. You have a history of sending him to the gladiator pits. Not and, a very good one. And as I said, that was a mistake, and not one I am quick to make. Just can't, you can't trust the rich in this city. We can't trust anyone. Well, that's true. I feel 75 golden ricks should aptly cover your interest. And then if you want to start a new business venture where we can be both benefiting from the sale of weed, then why not? Make a... But make I'd a, rather have a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, make a personality check. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. 17. Okay. He's just like, okay, okay, okay. I, that sounds fair, Aleph. I, you know, I had to start aggressively in these types of negotiations, but 75 gold and an olive branch that we might be able to start anew. You forgive me for my, my mistakes and we're square. No mistake. Mm-hmm. Business is business. I totally understand. I have no qualm whatsoever with what has been happened between the two of us. I can assure you, whatever business dealing we have in the future will be in the, our mutual interests. Fantastic. Fantastic. I am happy to hear that we were able to put this, put this to bed and put this behind us. So, I would invite you to partake with me, but um, imagine you've got a busy day ahead of you covering your goods and such and flipping those. Indeed. But thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. I'll be back. And he just nods and the, you know, the guards, like, at the whole time are, seem like they're pretty tense, but they never drew their weapons or anything, but they just kind of watch as you leave this hall. And then back did up they, to the alleyway. Did they look decent? I mean, do they look like, you know, I mean, did, the way they carried themselves and stuff, I mean, did they look like they were ample fighters? Hard to say, but, you know, based, they weren't, they were geared up well. Uh, they're wearing scale mail, they had long swords, so, like, they looked like professional fighters. They weren't just you know, some riffraff that they pulled up, pulled in off the street. Okay. Um, when we get out, when we get out, um, I'll kind of hold Mickey to the side there once everyone goes past us, and I'll just whisper into Mickey's ear, we need to do some possible watching of this place, if you can, Mickey. Maybe both of us see where the guards go. Maybe blackmail some of their families. Maybe a couple are sick someday. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I do. Yes. We just can't get caught. So and I, I would say to Aleph, <clears throat> I don't trust that little pipsqueak. 
Yes, I want to cut his goddamn head off. I think he understands, like in mathematics. He sold me, I'm back, you behind me. I don't think he thinks he can have his way, but definitely we shouldn't trust him for sure. You want to work with this man? No. No. I'm just, I'm just selling him what he wants to hear. Gotcha. Yes. All right. At some point in time, I think, you know, if, if we're if we're at a place where we could talk, at, it's at some point in time, Aleph, we need to kill this man and get rid of him out of your life. Mickey, we have to execute one of the noble sons. And I would like to kill the Mad Duke's son for betraying me. Ruklef, whoever betrayed you, we will find them and kill them too. This is not like me. I like to be alone. I like to be a loner, but I, I will swear to each of you, these are the people we need to kill. Uh, that Mad Duke's son always has uh, his... Uh... His bodyguards around, so he may he may be a little bit tougher to take down. Yes, we can take the easiest targets when we see fit and do our work. And it won't be easy, I don't think, especially the Mad Duke's son, the noble. But this Vermilion Viper, maybe he might be. It depends how much attention we have to get. The uh, Jarvis, Jarvis may have some more work for us. Room Cliff, we can squeeze by there. But at some point in time, we're going to piss off too many different factions in Lankmar, where we're going to have something else after us. It's just the way of the beast. Yeah, I would recommend we don't plan on killing that many people for exactly the reason you just spelled out, Wes. That, you know, if we need to, let's get rid of them. But we have to anticipate that the more body count builds on our reputation, the more mistakes go up. So, oh, all of these people we want to kill are horrible people, though. Should we not get rid of these terrible people in Lankmar? This is how Lankmar is the way it is, is it not? You want to go in the inner sea and you want to fish out all the fish? My point is, Lankmar is Lankmar. Whether I'm living in it, you're living in it, and we're living in it. I think it behooves us to do what we must, but let's not overplay our hand. If we can find a way to live with this Vermilion Viper, I will focus on more pressing matters. And if that turns out not to be possible, then absolutely, let, let's, let's, let's study a plan to get rid of the problem. And until it's a problem, I'm not, I'm not necessarily... Yes, not senseless murdering, yes, but... I feel if we get rid of him at some point in time, it's it's definitely going to make well someone else will just take his place. Correct. So the devil we know might be better than the one we don't. But hey, but I don't know anything. If I was really truly wise, uh, I wouldn't have made myself into you know unwilling victim of this. I I did it, and I want to learn not to do this again. Well, thank and you. Yeah, and thank I you for it, listening to me. And, and, and I owe it to you guys. I wouldn't be alive today here without you. So I will do whatever you think is best, but uh, yeah. Well, he's going to try and get a new hook in you. You're, you're, he's not going to, he's not going to let you off. He wants the gold to continue coming in. And if he does provide service, uh, I'm inclined to give him, give it to him. But if not, no. 
Uh, I, I don't think he's going to provide service. Well, then no money is coming he, either way past the 75 I, we agreed. So we got to, we have to come up with, we have to pay uh, Jarvis back. We, now we got to pay Vermilion Viper another 75 gold rooks. Well, well, let's, let's go back to my old place. I had a stash there. He feigned ignorance on it, even though I don't trust him. But, you know, before we make plans on how to get additional 75, let's see if they're still there. What? I know we should do this, but what about, let's get Rucliffe's stuff. Let's, let's, I thought I'd play that safe, right? What if it's trap? What if he, what if he's selling us up and uh, maybe he sold us to the Thieves Guild because he knows what we did? I assure you, if he knew what we did, he would have mentioned it. No Why did he play player. his hand? Because he just did. Like <laughs> he, he played his hand to say, so that you know, <laughs> I know this, I know that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I don't think he would have kept that part hidden as a leverage. Well, can we can we pool our funds at least? Let's get let's get Rucliffe some armor or something before we okay. go. Let's play it yeah. safe. Yeah, okay. I, I I don't disagree. Yeah, let's. I I have some money, Mickey. Maybe Aleph, if you have some, then we'll try to beat it out of the guards. Uh, I don't have much left, but I'm willing to give everything I have. Yes, yeah, so I have. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got. Six, Go, go ahead, Mickey. I, I've got 105 uh, gold r r reeks or ricks. Or oh, my, Mickey. You, so you're rich. well off. Yes, yes. You're yeah. doing well for yourself. I should probably mention this just so it's a part of your calculus of like how much you want to spend and things like that. So as Rahina said, your rent has doubled. What that means is each of you will owe her a gold pe a gold rilk per day to stay there. And basically okay. what that means is she you're sort of paying her off to throw you know, throw off the scent of any constables that check in or any th anyone from the thieves get like she she will try her best to throw off the scent of any trouble you guys get into. So that's really what you're paying for with her now at this point. Um, and I don't know if you guys even know like how much it costs to stay there, because up until this point, Jairus had been covering your bill. But now, at this point, you guys are on your own. So it's one gold each per character? Yeah. Okay, so we need we need the... I say we need to keep back two weeks for the inn and food. Um. Would we know how much armor costs? Could we try to split up scale mail with them? Scale mail would be... It said 80. Yeah. I, I'll throw 80. in 40 for them. I can throw in 40. Okay. I got and then, do you want us to subtract the end costs right now, or when do you want us to do that? Yeah, why don't you guys, um, why don't you do a week? Do a week? Okay. And then I'll cover, I'll cover root cliffs. So seven gold for each. I one. only have six left. All right, I'll give you gold too. <laughs> Sorry. Now we're going to kill the Vermillion Viper. Fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, Mickey's gonna, he's gonna, um, go with his begging costume and and uh, start trying to raise some more money and possibly picking pockets once in a while if he sees an opportunity okay um so i guess you guys are doing some shopping and such today like mickey is this something you're doing yet today or yeah if we're not going directly to uh okay aleph's place I think we were though, weren't we? Or not? Where were we going there first? I think we were going to get Rucliffe some armor. No, he's got a weapon. What do you guys think? Sure. Okay. 
So, um, probably the tenement that he was talking about is a place where you maybe dealt drugs out of. Um, and it sounds like, based on what he's saying, like, they don't... He's not currently using that building for that purpose at the present time. Um, but it's pretty close. It'd be in, like, the same, like, neighborhood where his headquarters is. So you walk maybe, like, five four or five blocks away. And um, you find this five-story building, like like almost like none of the windows have any glass in them anymore. Like this place is even worse off than the previous one. Um, but stairway leads up to where there's like double doors. There's only like one door left there. The other is cascaded in the, the gutter. Um, and so I think luck check from Aleph to find out if are the goods still here. That's fair. So I need to do roll less than my current 12 luck. Let's see. We got fleeting luck. A low a no, a nine. So we're good. Oh, yeah. Fleeting luck. I forgot about that. So um, it is there. Uh, and so you go up like on the second floor. There's a room there that you specifically use to kind of deal out of. And you pry up a little piece of like the molding along the like the baseboard, and there's like a little hole there that has this stuff that you kind of stashed just in case you know you were to get robbed or something like that. And so it is there. Um, and, you know, there's it doesn't appear to be anybody in the building as you traverse up the stairs and get up into this dingy, just no furniture. It's just an empty room. Um, but are we with them by chance? That's a good question. Are any of you in the building with him, or are you guys staying on the street level? Well, Depends uh, on if he asked. Yeah. I would have been like uh, to observe, this, to make sure that we weren't followed over here by anyone. Sure. Okay, so you're kind of watching out on the street level? Yeah. Okay. But I think, Al, if you're in there by yourself. Okay. <clears throat> so I retrieve the stash and as fast as I can get back to them. So as you're pulling that stuff out of the wall, I think it's your character that would have very familiar feeling as you're hearing, like, squeaking coming from the walls underneath your feet. Like, under, like, like under the floorboards and like scurrying. I start to scream, guys, guys. And from the outside, like you all are looking at this building and you're like, you're watching like pieces of like the plaster start to fall off the building. And like, there's a little bit of like a tremor that, at least, Al, if you're kind of feeling like the building is shaking. And you're starting to see plaster from the ceiling kind of fall a bit. It's just like thunderous kind of noise, like, like a train running by, like how many rats are probably embedded in the walls crawling about. Um, and so the building starts to collapse. You're starting to see, like... Why don't you give me a reflex saving throw? See if you can get out of there without incurring any. How many floors up is he? He's only on the second floor. Oh. Uh, I rolled a six. Okay. Um, fleeting luck. Fleeting luck. I even, even with three or four fleeting luck, I got only oh, get to the end. So leaving it at the six. So you, uh, unfortunately, just kind of end up buried. And so you're going to take a bit of damage. Uh, you'll take 10 points of damage. Oh, is more than I have. So oh, no. Those of uh -oh. you on the street level, you just see this whole thing kind of like implode on itself and like the debris from it. Like you probably have to run away yourselves as the thing collapses just to get away from all of 
every not getting crushed yourselves um but you know you never saw you never saw him come out and the only thing you do see is that from the remnants as the the dust sort of settles is there's just like all these scurrying rats that are like kind of like vacating that space and just pouring out into the different alleyways hmm I never knew a building could hold so many of them. Yeah, that reminds me of that ship. Let's find this crazy wizard dude. Mm -hmm. ah. I run to the building and I'm hollering Aleph's name as I'm stepping up on debris or whatever, trying to. So you're find hollering. Him. You're not hearing him call back. Um. Let's see, uh, Wes, you're starting to, like, kind of pull some of the debris out? Yeah, whatever I can, yeah. Okay. Um, are, there, are the rest of you helping with that? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to dig them out, too. I'm making comments. Well, that loan shark's going to be disappointed. <laughs> so, um, is Ruklef the strongest <laughs> of the three of you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Probably, yeah. Okay. So I want you 16. To, you'll do a strength check and then you'll add an additional plus two from their assistance. Okay. Uh, it's a 14 on the die, plus two, plus two, so uh, 18. Okay. So you manage to start to pull some of that debris out and pretty quickly um, you find his body. Um, Quick enough that if I don't think you have any like natural healing things that you can give him, but do we have that wine? Does that wine do it? The wine, um, not in this case. It won't be as fast acting as you need for that. But okay. if someone wants to, you got the fleeting luck here. Like if someone wanted to burn that a point of that to yeah give him a little boost here, um, yep. Alif, you could roll your hit die. One, <laughs> but it's more than zero. Yeah. So you're just like barely uh, coming conscious as they pull you from the wreckage. <gasps> oh my God. What happened in there? I'll grab him. I'll pick him up and kind of, you know, carry him like a, like a baby, I suppose. You know, I, I, he, uh, he's delirious. I, I, I looked in the hole where you were at and I, I pick up the bag, your stash that, the... <laughs> that you had that you had just grabbed yeah don't forget that let's it's, let's get out of here before the guards come quick as you as you pull him out he's delirious and he's saying elfmar elfmar the vermilion viper <gasps> that's all he says and as you're like leaving like you're fleeing this neighborhood you're overhearing like some like people are coming in to like kind of look at what happened and you overhear someone say that's the second one this week hmm. and so probably at this point with all the shopping the visiting of the vermilion viper coming here it's probably like getting to be like kind of evening like 5 p.m. ish like dinner time hours um so what would you guys like to do next? Probably head back to the inn if you guys are good with that. Just thinking the yeah. same thing. So you head back uh, to Beggar's Lodge. Rahina would be probably in the kitchen uh, preparing a little something for dinner and Jar uh, Jairus is back. And he's sitting... At a table, all the tables have been flipped up. Looks like maybe he's been back here for a little bit. He's been kind of tidying up or sweeping. He's like sweeping some of the glass up. And he says, Oh, you guys must. You can... He just looks right at uh, Aleph. He's like, You look like hell. Worst. Worst. Rat hell. Well, I'm not even going to ask about that. Building collapsed. Have you ever heard about buildings starting to collapse uh, in around certain neighborhoods? Uh, I, I don't full know. Full of rats. 
full of rats. You're describing half of Lankmar. I know, but are, are the buildings dropping, you know, more than what you would normally think? Uh, I, I don't... Somebody said this was the second one this week, which sounds... Um, and the last time unusual. that we saw, we saw any rats like this was on the ship over here when they had some... What the hell was it? Rat commander guy or whatever? Man in yeah. oh, yeah. to do yeah. stuff? Didn't we kill him? Jairus is just like, I guys, I told you not to go drinking again. What are you guys talking about? But when we were on the ship, there was uh Chris will check his notes, but it was uh something about uh the rat lord of Someplace. Rat King mm. of Ilthmar. Rat King of Ilthmar. You see, the, this person was like controlling all of these rats. They were doing his bidding. And you think that happened? Yeah. You, you He's... may think Ru Rukoff is, is back on the sauce, but he's not. He's still in the true. I, I'm a, it's a more sober than I've <laughs> been in a long time. God, what is with Trouble. you guys? Like, trouble follows you everywhere you go. Buildings collapse and rats. I I, it is. I don't know what to tell you about that. That's a pro maybe a problem for another day. I, I've got some info about your missing stuff. Oh yes. Um, it it is being held currently at a guardhouse just just on the outskirts of this neighborhood. Sounds All like right. they station up to nine folk. It's, you know, they, they, they employ six constables who are essentially beat cops that patrol the neighborhood. Hard to say how many of them would be there at one time, but they're not super vigilant about patrolling these neighborhoods. So an error on the side of more of them being there than less. Um, they've also got two... Uh, sergeants that are typically there to take reports from the public and then the whole place is overwatched by a commander so so it's like we need to make a distraction two story building with a cellar where they keep a jail just a holding cell for the drunks and whatnot. Um, windows are all barred from what I can tell on the first floor you might be able to get up on the second floor and maybe slip in that way um, I mean front door is not not probably a good idea do you know how many people are currently being held in the cells um from what I understand, there's only one... There's a drunk that they picked up. Seems like maybe they think he's you. Mm. Too bad for him. Hmm... I don't know, we might... I mean, we could maybe case the place and see how many go in and out. Maybe myself and Mickey can make a run now if I don't think he's in any shape Correct. to fight. And I can stick around here and help him out. Maybe I know? can I can cause a distraction for Mickey and maybe he can get in quick and get all the fear down for that, Mickey. I could... I could try and get up to the second level and see if see if I can get in that way too, you know. Doesn't sound doesn't sound like going straight in is is uh is gonna work unless we can draw those guards away and I don't I don't know if they're gonna leave their post. I might be able to help them with that. What what do you got in mind? 
something that's not good. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> anyway, um, I can, I can, uh, let me, let me see if I can get up to the second floor and get in that way. You want to head out and check it out? Yeah. All right. And it, uh, is it just Mickey and Wes that are heading out, or is the whole crew coming? Would that if we gave Aleph that wine, it doesn't heal him right away, right? It's I not can like still a healing potion. You could. I do can it. still get. So sorry, God, Alex, go. Sorry. Yeah. So basically, um. I'm going to count that heal that you did, Aleph, as like, like a combat, like an encounter heal, not the 30-minute rest that you get once per day. Um, so if you use the 30-minute rest, you only get once per day. You, that's when you can use the, the wine to get a little bonus. And the wine has four doses, so you get to use it four times. So if we rested like a half hour, that would help him? Yeah. Well, why don't we do that? Yeah, that would be better if we went over there with the whole crew rather than so, us trying to do it by ourselves. So if you want to do that, Aleph, uh, you could burn another one of these fleeting luck. Okay. We'll and then that. you get your hit die plus your stamina bonus plus your level. And then if you use the wine, you could get a plus two. Additionally, okay, I will use the wine. Oh, yeah, I'm lucky. Uh, four on the die plus three seven, so I only need one dose of the wine, and I get to four. All right, uh, does one of you have the wine um, on your inventory that's tracking the doses? I will do so if you guys trust me. Uh, and then yes. it's not that doesn't mean that I'll use it by only myself, but I'll keep track of the doses. Awesome. All right. Uh, so you guys are going to head out. And it's kind of like last time. I, I don't have, like, I don't have walls and line of sight and all that. You're going to see the full map. But really on this one, I don't know that I care that much that you guys can see it. Because it's a guardhouse. Like, it's pretty there's basic. No, there's no secret doors or anything. Um, right. <clears throat> So hey, Alex, I'm gonna use the restroom here. Real sure. Quick. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, it looks like Dave had stepped away for just a second too. So why don't we just take like a five minute break while people take a little break here? So we'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> and we're back. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us here tonight as we play some more twenty sides against Lankmar. Our crew of Bravos here have decided um, they're going to try to recover some of Ruklef's things that were strewn about the city last night after a epic tier uh, <laughs> bender. <laughs> um, yes. So they've identified a little bit with the assistance of their friend Jairus that... That stuff is currently being held up at a guardhouse on the fringes of the neighborhood where they're staying in the slums. Likely will not stay there long. Lankmar Constabulary is notoriously corrupt and will at, probably at some point divvy all that stuff up or sell it and split the proceeds or at least a portion of the proceeds amongst themselves, um, whatever they can get away with from, you know, the eye of the... Out, outside of the eye of the commander. Uh, they've gotten some numbers of how many they can expect in there. They know that there's a drunk that's currently being held in the cellars, the cellar jail. Um, so anyway, you you get to this place. It's like kind of on the corner of a block. Um, just really on the outskirts, probably relatively close to the city wall on the south side of the city. Um, so if things did go sour and they were able to call in reinforcements, it could be it could be bad. Um, there there is that possibility. 
you're looking at this place. It looks like it's a two-story uh, safe house. There is a front door and a back door that you're able to find. Both look heavily... They're, they're both iron doors that look like they can be um, barred or reinforced on the other side. Um, typically, people are free to come in here and file complaints and things like that. So there is, there is precedent for like a public, a member of the public entering into the guardhouse, but, um, there's that. If things went down, like they have a way of like reinforcing the house itself, all of the windows on the first floor are barred. So that there's no possibility of, really getting in on the, that way without some tools and probably making a bunch of racket. Second level, however, um, there are windows, glass windows. They are not barred, but um, they're also not covered. Um, so if you go up there and you happen to be unlucky, there's a possibility you get spotted pretty quick. Um, other than that, what other, I guess, what other types of information are you looking to find? Hmm. I think that would be, I mean, I think that's all, that's all we would be able to, whatever Jarvis would have given us or, um, Probably. you know, I guess if, if the, all four of us, oh, go ahead. I was just going to make a, uh, probably point out that this seems like it is the public entrance on the front end here where I just put the token. Okay. And then the back the back side, it looks like that's more like for the constables and the patrol. You probably see, maybe while you're casing the joint, you see uh, like a patrol switch out. Two guys go in, two guys leave, kind of thing. Okay. I just see black on foundry. Oh, okay. You don't see. Let me just see. I probably have token vision on, so that would be the problem. There we go. Hmm. You may okay. need. You may need to refresh. Um, but yeah, it should be all exposed for you now. So this, uh, sorry, I'll point that out again. This side is the public entrance. That back side there is where the constables um, come and go from. Okay. Does anybody want to go in and and uh, make some some sort of complaint that they didn't get their their uh their items back when they were in in here for a drunk at some point or something like that find out what room the the uh um items are kept in well i think we need a bigger distraction than that do you um one of well, us could just, try that but yeah i was just thinking of that so that we could pinpoint uh, the room that we need to get to to uh, find where Rukloff's, uh stuff is. Yeah, I mean, if they're looking for me, it probably wouldn't be a good idea for them to see me. No. Is there well, any way we could disguise him? Do we have, like, makeup or anything? Or... As thieves, or well, you uh, disguise. Uh, I, you know, we have disguise self. I'm terrible at that, though. Um, I'm I'm pretty good at it. I took a little bit of a different path. But that's just disguise self, not disguise others. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't. I, you know, even. Even though it's just for self, you know, you might be able to give him some tips on how to do that. But so, 
it's not like 5e where you've got some kit that just magically has all those things like you'd have to put together a plan to go and like acquire those things which you could do um it's yeah, just gonna take your time think, yeah. I, I wondering, I wouldn't, like if I, oh, go ahead i wouldn't have rukov go in there unless uh uh you know unless he's needed to fight Uh, if we go into a fight, guys, we already lost. Yeah, uh, but perhaps just to provide some cover as we uh, retreat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could, I could uh, probably try and get through on the second floor to scout around and try and find where his stuff is. Yeah, I mean, I. Now there is there this building is well lit all the way around on the outside. Um, I would say yes to the first floor. On the second floor, like like you see this little little image here of of the bunkhouse. Yeah. Those, yeah, those two windows are. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll some dice. To... They are not lit. Okay. Uh. Would there be any uh, windows on the side of the building or just those two that are on the front? Just those two that are on the front. Okay. Um, then, then I would probably try and... Uh, um, are there guards standing right uh, by that front entrance or are they no. or is it just barred from the inside no i'm just saying it, it looks like like they are secu like they're meant to be able to do that not necessarily that they currently are uh, okay. there, there, there are no guards posted there no all right uh i could uh i could uh come up this uh corner of the building and 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 you know uh, get over to the the first window or something like that to try and get in. So you're, you're going to climb up the side of the building and try to get through a window on the second floor? Yeah. Okay. So give me a climb sheer surfaces check. Okay, that's uh, 22. Okay, hey, that one's good. Also need you to make a sneak silently check to quietly be climbing the side of the building. <laughs> Those are fleeting luck. On. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a one, though. Okay, you rolled a one, so your fleeting luck goes away. However, I would remind you that both you and Wes have a connection. So, I don't, I don't play things that a natural one is necessarily an automatic failure, but you're at a pretty, pretty bad deficit. Um, as far as what you need, but the two of you are both thieves and you can use luck to affect the other. So if you so chose, you know, you might still be able to make this a success. It depends on how, how badly you want to not. Okay. So and when I use a point of luck. Then you roll every um, every point of luck that you spend. You roll that luck die. So, you know you can okay. My you can luck make out pretty is... good, and I'll let you. If you need to, you can burn a point of luck. Roll, burn a point of luck. Roll. You know, 
Fine. Yeah, like I'm gonna. I, I think like Wes would feel like like a an impending doom for Mickey, for well, for, no. for Dodger, and then he would burn. I'll burn two things of luck for him. So I'll burn two two of my luck. So what my luck die would be a D four, wouldn't it? I believe it's luck, a D four yeah. at level two. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so somebody said that I was getting two luck from them, and I'll burn, I'll get a couple of luck myself. So that would be uh, four times I can roll this. Oops. Okay, so that brings it up to 14. Okay. So with a 14, I was looking for 13. So you, um, as you're climbing, uh, maybe for just like a split, like you slip and like you, you jam your foot down, um, pretty hard on like, like a lip of the molding on the outside. And, it makes a loud sound, but it kind of does so right as like the wind, like a howling wind kind of picks up and it sort of muffles the the sound such that anybody on the inside would likely not, you know, not cause too much of a distraction as this other sound kind of muffles it. So you manage to get up to that window there. Um, as you're looking into that room... What you see is, uh, like I said, it is dark in there, uh, but you're peering in. Um, it's dim light outside as well. There's just like a little bit of maybe lamp light from, from the outside looking in. But it looks like there's a number of bunks in there in a square table um, center of the room. And each of those three bunks are currently occupied with sleeping guard. How big is this room? Um, pretty does it big. Cover the, the full front of the building. It the... does. Yep. And then what you see okay. is that there's two there's two doors that you can plainly see from the window, uh, wooden doors. All right, I'm I'm gonna try and slip in. All right, so you slip into the room. Sounds of snoring coming from those bunks. The table in the center of the room has some empty mugs. Um, maybe a stain from where some ale got spilled, maybe a little bit earlier, uh, around dinner time or something like that. Uh, just kind of like a little bit of a mess that needs cleaning up. A couple of barrels uh, over here in the corner that likely either have ale or water in them. Um, this, you know, this is basically the little barracks of of the house. Um, there is, and then there's the two doors. As you were probably looking around, poking around, you also see a doorway over here. So there's actually three doorways in the room. All right, I'm I'm going to try and go to that uh, door that's in the center of the room. Okay. You go up to the door. And uh, do I... Do I see any light underneath the door to clue me in on if there's someone working in the next room? Second. Very faint light. Like maybe like a candlelight or a lantern light. Hmm. What what about the other door that's that's uh 
on that same wall? Um, that one I'm gonna say no light. All right, I'm I'm gonna try and go through the door that has no light and and uh, um, take a look around in that room. Okay, uh, you open up. You're opening that door up. Yeah. Okay, you open up that door. On the other side, there are two single beds, and there's one person in one of the beds sleeping. Um, there's a wardrobe within the room, as well as a a small table and a sitting chair. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna back out of that room because that doesn't seem like a promising room. Um, I'm go I'm gonna go back over to that other door and um I want to I want to uh listen very carefully and see if I can hear any movement uh on the other side of it What's your luck score? Uh right now? Yeah, right now. Uh, 12. Okay. On the other side of this door, you hear a very low sound of like like someone snoring. All right, I'm I'm going to slip through that door. Okay. You open up the door and there is a lantern that is sitting on a desk, a big plush chair where there is a, a man who is wearing um, a uniform that designates him as the commander of the office. But he's got his feet up on the desk, and he's leaning back in the chair, and he's currently sleeping. <coughs> Big stack of paperwork in front of him, inkwell and, you know, pen. Looks like he was burning the midnight oil, and uh, there's a flask on the, the desk. Maybe he, he hit, hit the whiskey a little bit. And now he's he's currently sleeping. Um, behind him, you can see there's a pair of chests that occupy the room. And then off to your right, there is a vault door, an iron door. Currently okay, locked. So. All right. Um, and there's a key ring. Hanging off the belt of the sleeping commander. All right, I'm 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 gonna go over um to the commander and and attempt to uh, okay. uh pickpocket uh you know slip the key off off of his belt there. Pickpocket check. And I will say you can do the... Well, okay, you already rolled it. What? Uh, 13. Okay. Final answer? Uh, no, I'd, I'd like to... Um, like to burn a couple of my luck points. Okay. Very tense. Okay, that'll bring it up to 19. All right. You manage to slip. You have to, like, kind of undo his belt so that you can slide the key ring off. As you do so, like, he kind of, at a couple of moments, kind of coughs a little bit, stirs a little bit, but he never opens his eyes, and you're able to slip the ring of keys off his belt. All right, um, I'll use it to go into the vault and, and uh, look around there then. All right, I need you to make a move silently check as you open up the heavy vault door 
See if he can prevent it from waking him up. Seventeen. Okay. Before I describe whether that success is a success or a failure, and you can think about whether you want to use any luck on that or not, um, I just want to check in with the other characters on the street level, Wes, Aleph, and Ruklef. Is there anything that the three of you are doing? It's probably been about ten minutes as, you know, Mickey has is not speed running through this place. He's being very, very delicate, very slow and methodical. So, I guess Aleph will ask the others if we, we should do a, uh, like go inside and, and attract some attention. Probably not, right? Just stay quiet. No, I think, I, I think we attract some attention from the outside. Um, Rulecliff, if you can, Hide yourself, but maybe me and Aleph are in a drunk stupor, and we'll give you our coin purses because we know they'll go missing. All right. I think the distraction out here would help him if he's inside, right? Well, it depends. Depends. Yeah, right. That's depends the risk, what's right? going Good. on in there. Yeah. Do we trust Mickey or not? I I think we the best thing we can do is trust him. But I think we trust him. He's got the he's got those hates or fates working for him too, right? Yes, I mean the deal with the devils. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think that they would that they were Well maybe if go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say if they're if they've got their hooks in him or whatever, they, I don't think they'll let him. They'll let him die or whatever, right? Maybe, maybe if the guards come here and we make a scene, we um, what's our story of? I was thinking I would go inside and tell them of the building collapse and about the rats and just be as freaking outrageous as they can, but I don't know if that's a great idea or not. Yeah, I, I I think if we I think the main thing would be if any guards come back here, maybe we go around to the back side. That if any guards are on duty and they're walking and they're going in distract them from going in, but let's not try and call attention from inside out unless we start hearing a, a commotion. Rush. Yeah, yeah. I All mean, right. I can. I'll. I'll stay here on this side, kind of hidden, as best as I can. I'll listen for anything in that window, and you guys maybe go around back and keep any distract any guards from actually going in. That might be okay. Good. We idea. can do that. Okay. All right. But, let's do that. So, but from... let's cover our faces just in case, like with you know, so that we're not immediately oh. It looks like that. You guys aren't actively doing anything currently. Like, you're kind of waiting to react to if something happens. Okay, so yeah. got it. The two of you are going to the backside just to uh, see if any patrols come and go. And then, uh, Ruklef, you're waiting on the front end of the building? Yes. Okay. Guys, I think hit upon, you know where this uh, thing is going upstairs. So, Mickey, uh, any any anything... Any more luck that you're spending on that check? Uh, no, I think I was going to leave it at that. Okay. You open the door. And uh, it doesn't seem that the guard has stirred. Inside the vault, what you can see are... There's a lot more than Ruklef stuff in here. Uh, but you definitely see his armor on a shelf. Um, but then there are 
Uh, there's actually two shelves in here. Uh, one, one on the left side, one on the right side. And then there's four oversized chests. Okay. Um, I'm going to gather up uh, Rucliff's stuff. All right. Um, and as much as it hurts me to not go after additional treasure, um, um, I, I don't think that I would be silent enough by, if I try and carry too much. So uh, I'm going to leave it at, uh, at just getting Rucliff stuff. So the candlelight flickers a bit as you enter into the vault. And the door closes behind you. And you're in pitch, it's pitch black inside the vault. Oh, I thought the vault just had, had a, a, a barred door. I didn't know it had a solid door. But... It's, yeah, it's a solid iron door. Like, it's not unlike the, um, the make of that crematorium door. Like, it's like a solid door except you know this one's to maybe prevent heat <laughs> from blowing it open uh versus coming out so you are locked in here it would appear you get you're the one that has the keys so it, it doesn't have a key from the inside no um this is like a vault door that's only only lockable from the outside. What like, is it? Automatically close, or or did somebody close it on me? So many questions. Well, I was wondering if if I would have heard somebody go over to no. the door, and slam it. No, but there um, is a whispery voice in the room with you. A debt is paid. A debt is owed. Yes. You have failed to deliver. We are very angry know. with you. I always intended on paying my debt. I just haven't had enough time yet. I didn't know there was a deadline on that. Feel you are not sufficiently motivated to get the task done. Spend your time earning coin, stealing from the law. Uh, I'm not. Have I'm not stealing from my. Mixed up. No, I'm just retrie I'm I'm retrieving some of my friends' uh, items that. Uh, the law picked up. They're not willing to you any law. We have found others who will get the job done. If they are the ones to stick the knife in that buffoon's heart before you do, they will be coming to find you next. Uh, do I have the opportunity to to do it before uh, before they do, and uh, make good my promise? Suddenly the door like opens and like there's a little bit of light, that candle light or that that lantern light, and you feel the dark presence of that entity is gone. Okay, I'm going to take the opportunity to. Uh, Take Rukov's stuff and and uh, head for uh, head back the way I came in. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm gonna say no problem. Uh, you you pass kind of the checks to get in here, and I'm not gonna have you reverse do them here to get out. I guess maybe just one luck check to kind of wrap this up and see if there's any further complication with the leaving. 
So luck check. What do I roll the the d twenty? Yep. And have to get under my luck. You have to get under. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh. Five. Okay, you make it out. You get out the window. There's not a peep from the inside. It doesn't appear that anybody has been alerted to the fact that the vault has been broken in. What do you do with the keys? Do you keep the keys? Um. Yeah. What should I do with the keys? Uh, I'm. I'm. As I'm. Uh, as I'm going by uh, the uh, bunks on the outside, I'm gonna uh, lay the key on the end of of one of the uh, soldiers' bunk. You know. Okay. Um, as as if he had taken the key or something like that. Sure. All right. Uh, so. You do that, and you regroup with the others with with the stuff. Probably dropping some the armor. You probably just drop on the outside and have one of them catch it, um, and you get out no problem. And then a lot of you make your way back to Beggar's Lodge. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to discuss uh, the urgency of uh, completing my task, um, or I won't be with the group much longer. <laughs> All right, well, let's, well, I mean, I'm in it with you, so I appreciate you gathering my equipment. I take it he he got everything, right? He got everything. The, everything that you had lost from the browsing, uh, you have back. Okay. I will I tell you one. Yeah, I will tell you, Miki, you're, you're impressive. I, I don't know how you pull this off, but... It was a shame because there was lots of other stuff in there, and I really, really wanted to grab it. But what other stuff? Well, other things that they've confiscated from people, you know. I mean, but um, I just had my hands full with his his gear, so I I really couldn't be uh, going through it. If if I had, you know, if if we were there as a group, then we all could have, you know, made off with some of it, but. Anyway, so these fates, right? Is that what they're called? Fates? Uh, I think they're called the hates. Hates. Ugh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, it looks like we know what we're doing next. Tomorrow. Where is this guy. <laughs> and this was the guy that was. On the boat with us, right? That yep. Yes. Sir. All right. Yeah, they they did they did tell me that there is another group involved uh, that they uh, uh, made a uh, deal with to kill this guy off. So we may be in a race to see who who uh, takes him out. Do you think that these others know that, that perhaps I don't know anything about these hates, but do you think that they would have told the others the same thing? So perhaps they may come after you first to give them more time? Uh, I don't think the hates have given them uh, the task to take me out yet. They're going to take out the uh that prince first and then and then they might give him that another task to take me out but uh that's not happened yet so if if we take out the the uh the uh lord or whatever his name is if we take him out first uh, then it'll be them that's in the doghouse and not me. Well, it seems we have another difficult situation to do, so. And I think Jarus may have another job as well. I think he was looking. Yeah, maybe he could help us on this one. We could probably use as much help as possible. 
So, um, this is all like kind of conversation you're having as you make your way back to Beggar's Lodge. Um, hey, have a good night, Grape Eight. Thanks for hanging out with us here tonight. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. So you guys go back to Beggar's Lodge. Um, Jairus is not there any longer. Um, Rahina is sitting at her little desk as you, as you walk in. So as you walk down the, the little entry hallway, she uh, she looks up, says, "Oh, are we calling it an early night?" That's good. Yeah, we've so. got we've got a, a you know a long day for us tomorrow. Well, you have a visitor. It's fine. He he's cool. He he knows Jairus. Oh, okay. So you, In the common room. Yeah, she like points to like the common area. So, you guys move forward and kind of round the corner to go in there. Okay. So as you as you go in there. You see uh, this dusky-skinned, dark-haired um, individual who is wearing, um, I would say, he's wearing a brown toga, and he's got kind of like this little kind of foppish-looking hat that he's wearing, um, which sort of marks him as maybe some type of entertainer of some kind. And he he raises his hand and he stands at attention, big bright look on his face as you all enter. He says, Ho, oh, good Sir Raz, have you a moment to discuss with me? Um, a bit of a business matter, guaranteed to make you your your coin purses swell with coin and alleviate the worries of your humble disposition. Yes. I look, I look at everybody else, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good, good. Jairus told me that there are none finer than you four to make all of my worries and troubles go away. You see, good friends, my problems are thus. I am the leader of a noble troop of mummers and actors known as the Dung Sweep Players. We provide the less fortunate with quality entertainment, We try to uplift the masses of this great fair city with brief diversions from the cares of their daily lives and the drudgery of just trying to survive another day in this, this, the city of trouble. Yes, and not only do we go to try to entertain, we try to inspire, um, and... And give the the downtrodden maybe the last laugh over the nobles of our of our fair city. Um, it is an honest living for an actor, even if sometimes uh, we dispense kernels of truth that are really just kind of wrapped up in in the grandiose escapism that we provide. As of late, my troop has maybe garnered a little bit too much attention from the upper class. You see, we recently um, debuted a new play, The Fiascos of Duke Hogfat. And this is a name that would ring Mickey. You would remember this name, perhaps, because you confronted a particularly unpleasant noble who... uh, did he beat to death? Or he had the, the guards beat to death, or well, at least within inches of his life. Um, someone that had just crossed his path. And um, it was a very public display. Um, and so he tells you that he's debuted a play that apparently features this prominent noble. And he says, This show has proven to be popular with not only the humble residents of Lankmar's slums and tenements, but also among its craftsmen, merchants, and soldiery. In fact, our performances have even been attended by veiled and hooded nobles who come to laugh at our mockery of a certain pompous noble whom we skewer like a forest boar with our barbs and observations. 
and it is there that my troubles lie. Duke Borvat. Word has gotten back to this. Uh, yes, uh, yes, he's heard about what we are doing, and is causing. He means to cause harm to us. I believe. I believe. I hear it. I hear it in the murmurs on the streets. Um, his temperament is well known. His passion for retribution. Um, this is where you, you, you find lot. You, you of stout stock and noble disposition. You for. Would be the answer, those armed angels, those sword bearing benefactors that I so desperately need in this hour of, of tribulation. What say you? Uh, what's the deal? Okay, fine, fine, fine. You know, <laughs> we're all business people here. <laughs> and he like kind of like drops the act a little bit and he says, Okay, we can pay. We can pay. I would offer each of you. Five gold rilks each for just simple security duty. If if there are problems and violence spills out, the Duke does make a move, I will give you a bonus of ten rilks each for your trouble in dealing with this matter. Per day? Yes. Have you ever been able to identify any of the hooded nobles that are there? Well, have you ever seen Lord Snerve? Uh, why, yes, he frequents our plays. He's he has a keen eye in laughing in the faces of his his betters or his equals. You are friends of his? Acquaintances. Oh, well. We, uh, spent a boat ride with him, let's just say. Oh, yes, he is, he is well known for uh, his voyages across the inner sea. He brings back tales, and sometimes we spin those into our, our street performances. Hmm. When is your next performance? And he he will tell you that the, the next performance will be um, three days from now. Hmm. And he would be um, <clears throat> happy to escort you like a day early uh, once, it, once they're all kind of set up. You know, they're apparently doing some sort of renovations a little bit to like kind of cater to all the different clientele that they have that are coming to uh, be a part of the audience. And so he'd be happy to like kind of show you around and kind of let you prepare for how best to secure uh, the place. The March Light Theater. March Light? Yeah, March Light. March Light. Where is it located? Um, it is located in the uh, near the plaza of Dark Delights. Oh, so it's likely where it gets its name. It's on the side of the city that is most closely near the gate that leads out to the marsh, uh, the salt marsh. I think we can do that, dear sir. Oh, huzzah! Huzzah forever! Yes! Excellent! Oh, good, good. Well then, um, just, of course, uh, come by and see me in two days' time, and I'll, I'll give you the tour. What was your name? My name is Jalo. Jalo? Yes. J-A-L-L-O. Jello. <laughs> In my language, jalo means uh, yellow. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Well, I am a little bit yellow, and that's why I come to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. All right. So, um, other questions or anything else you want to discuss with him? Otherwise, he'll uh, take his leave from you for the night. I don't have anything. But we know in all likelihood, Mickey, where your quarry will be in three evenings. Do you think that's... Uh, uh, I don't know do you if think that would be enough. okay for three days, or, or do you think uh, uh, it should be done earlier? No, no, no. Can you... Can you talk to these hates? Um, I could try but i'm not sure if they're they're not they're not pleased with me right now so they're not going to be uh asking if if uh you know to do any favors for me if there other if the other ones that uh have con have been given this task do it before the three days then you know that it's too late then but no the, the problem i would think with a noble is they've got a lot of business it's hard to pinpoint where and when they're going to be at any particular time yeah well hopefully the other individuals We'll have the same problem then. Yeah, I mean, I would think when he's traveling around town or whatever, he would have guards with him and everything. So, you know, you're likely not going to, you know, unless you do a full scale attack in the middle of the street on the guy, you know, the opportunities I would think would be limited. But knowing where and when somebody's going to be, you can plan accordingly. Plus, we'll have a whole day. To scout the place out. I mean, we could even, you know, set up a particular spot for him that would be, you know, for him to sit that would be easier access for you. Yeah, especially if we're in charge of the security. Uh, I suppose we can uh, set that up, as you say, to. To make it easier for us to take him out. Yeah. Maybe they have balconies there. I mean, he could be cordoned off kind of in his own little place. And So we, we it seems that we have the opportunity, but I think the narrative is imperative. What I mean is, if we are in charge of security and he gets killed in a place where we are in charge of security, we already set ourselves for being the full guys. So what I'm trying to say here is it has to look I, I mean, let me, let me backtrack one second. We have to hope better. We have to be certain that uh, Baron uh, Hogfart sends his goons and we have to pin the death on them because any other scenario is a no bueno for us. Yeah. I mean, do they serve food there and stuff i mean is it possible to weaken him with herbs and things like that that uh i don't know how this stuff works guys so know, we'll, if we oh, we'll man. uh revisit this in the next session when you're doing the full-on reconnaissance but yes there is absolutely like a private area where the nobles are kind of cordoned off on a balcony area like, a lot of this is, like, exactly as you could probably picture it. And then there's, like, a food cart court area, like, outside the theater where food vendors come and bring, like, all their carts and stuff and hope to sell to the the people coming and going from the... It's like a big heist here, guys. I like it. 
we got two days to set this up and then one day to actually go there and scout and do that. But, you know, we have to meet uh, Giallo in two days. So that gives us two days to come up with a viable plan. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, maybe we should get a, a good night's rest and uh, start making our our plans tomorrow then. All right. I think that sounds good. And thanks again, Mickey. I appreciate uh, I appreciate you getting my stuff back. And I also appreciate you guys uh, offering if this didn't work to get me more stuff so i do appreciate it and can't guarantee that what happened the other night won't be the last time that it'll happen but <laughs> i'll try and i'll try and tone it down a bit maybe well we'll, we'll get you we'll get you into some uh you know uh, a uh members meeting to you know <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. Keep away from this stuff for a while. <laughs> That's going to be tough. All well, right. They, they have a support group. And they, you know, they they chain you down at night and Ooh. keep <laughs> keep away from it. That speaking yeah. of experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're just about it. Uh, 10 o'clock here so I think we are going to call it a night a lot happened in this session uh, a lot of complicating things that happened but um, and, and a longer list of people that we need to kill at some point by the time the campaign is over so uh, thanks everyone for hanging out with us um, if this is your first time watching this um you know, this was only episode five, so there's not like a ton of episodes. If you want to get caught up, just check out our YouTube channel. We've got a playlist there of the 20 Sides Against Link Bar um, streams and shows, so you can get caught up. This is a very be kind of like a short run campaign, at least um, in the immediate term. We're thinking about doing about about 10 episodes or so. So this kind of this session right here kind of marks that right in the middle kind of point. So. Um, if you haven't already done so, please do come and check out our Discord server. That's where you can come talk to us between the streams and maybe even find yourself in one of these games uh, yourself. We do a lot of... Our whole thing is we're trying to get, you know, we try to recruit people that like watching our streams to come and play games with us. So come and join us there. I think we'll throw a raid out here as we wrap up to... Go and see the folks over at C Plus Content and see what they're playing tonight. So that's it for us. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate all the support. And thanks for hanging out with us uh, as we play some more DCC Lankbar. <laughs>